assalamu alaikum students welcome back to physiologics youtube channel in this video we will be discussing the mcqs related to clinical anatomy and we will be focusing on the upper limb only mcq number one which of the following bones in the human body is the first one to ossify option a humerus option b scapula option c clavicle option d ulna and the correct option is option c clavicle the clavicle is the first bone to ossify in the human body mcq number two you are seeing a patient who had a fall on an outstretched hand x-ray findings report fractures of the right clavicle what is the most common site of clavicle fracture option a medial end of clavicle option b lateral end of clavicle option c shaft of clavicle and option d conoid tubercle and the correct option is option c shaft of the clavicle the most common site of fracture of clavicle is the junction where the convex part meets the concave part and the shaft of the fracture is the commonest site of clavicle fracture mcq number three a patient presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaint of left shoulder weakness on examination you observe an unduly prominent medial border of the scapula active range of motion testing shows that the arm cannot be abducted beyond 90 degrees what is the most probable diagnosis option a paralysis of serratus anterior muscle option b winging of scapula option c paralysis of deltoid and option d and the correct option is option d both a and b when there is paralysis of serratus anterior muscle it causes a prominent medial border of the scapula and it is also known as winging of scapula so in this case the option d both a and b is correct mcq number four the winging of scapula is seen in the paralysis of the serratus anterior muscle damage to the which of the following nerves may result in this condition option a medial pectoral nerve option b lateral pectoral nerve option c long thoracic nerve and option d axillary nerve and the correct option is option c long thoracic nerve the supply of serratus anterior muscle is by the long thoracic nerve so if there is damage to long thoracic nerve it would result in the damage to the serratus anterior muscle and this would ultimately result in the winging of scapula as discussed in previous mcq mcq number five a five-year-old child presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaint of right elbow stiffness he had a history of fall on an outstretched hand three months ago that resulted in the fracture of his arm bone which of the following side fracture is most common among children of this age group option a surgical neck of humerus option b shaft of humerus option c supracondyle the region of humerus and option d anatomical neck of humerus and the correct option here is option c supracondyle the region of humerus you must remember that in children when they fall on now stretch hand the most common area is area of fracture is supracondylar region but if uh, the patient is old like 50 to 60 years of age the most common site would be the radius and it would result in the coolies fracture so the most important thing you need to remember is that in children after the fall in the outstretched hand it results in supracondylar fracture of humerus mcq number six walkman ischemic contracture is commonly seen after fracture of the arm occlusion of which of the following arteries can lead to this condition option a axillary artery option b radial artery option c brachial artery and option d ulnar artery and the correct option is option c brachial artery when there is occlusion of blood flow due to damage to the brachial artery this can result in walkman ischemic contracture and most commonly it is followed by a fracture of the supracondylar region this supracondylar fracture can compromise the blood flow flowing through the brachial artery and this may ultimately result in Walkman ischemic contracture. MCQ number seven, humerus is least supported by the muscles or the bones in which direction? Option A, superior, option B, inferior, option C, posterior, and option D, anterior. And the correct option is option B, inferior, the least support of humerus in the shoulder joint is in inferior direction superiorly it is covered by the rotator cuff muscles sits and inferiorly it has the least support mcq number eight a 57 year old female had a fall over his right hand due to slippery floor x-ray showed the fracture of lower end of the radius the patient's wrist joint shows a spoon shaped deformity 
what is the most probable diagnosis in this case option a coli's fracture option b smith's fracture option c bennett's fracture and option d none of these and the correct option here is option b smith's fracture smith fracture result when there is a fall on the bent hand or flexed wrist joint and it shows a spoon shaped deformity you must differentiate it from another type of fracture that happens when there is fall on the outstretched hand and it results in the dinner fork deformity which is known as coolies fracture mcq number nine you are seeing a two-year-old child having pain in his right elbow his parents reported that he was lying on the floor and our housemate grabbed his hand from the wrist and pulled him up. The child is complaining of pain since then. What could have happened in this case? Option A, radial head fracture. Option B, dislocation of ulnar head. Option C, subluxation of radial head. And option D, subluxation of scaphoid bone. And the correct option here is option C, subluxation of radial head. This condition here, when you pull a child by grabbing his wrist joint, this is known as pulled elbow or nurse made the elbow where the radial head sublux from the another ligament and this condition you must remember the name it is called nurse made elbow or pulled elbow and in this condition there is subluxation of radial head mcq number 10 dinner fog deformity is seen in which of the following conditions option a coolies fracture option b scaphoid fracture option c smith's fracture and option d bennett's fracture and the correct option here is option A, Coley's fracture. This results in dinner fog like deformity. MCU number 11. A patient presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaint of left elbow stiffness. He had a history of RTA three months ago that resulted in the fracture of shaft of humerus. His orthopedic surgeon has advised physiotherapy for elbow joint range of motion. On examination, you notice that the patient is unable to extend his wrist joint which of the following nerves might be damaged option a axillary nerve option b musculocutaneous nerve option c radial nerve and option d ulnar nerve and the correct option here is option c radial nerve when there is fracture to the shaft of the humerus you must remember that the radial nerve passes here in the radial groove in the shaft of humerus and it the fracture of shaft of humerus may result in damage to the radial nerve so and the second point here in this mcu is that he is unable to extend the wrist joint which means that his wrist will be in the position of a wrist drop that is caused by damage to radial nerve as it supplies the extensors of wrist joint mcu number 12 subluxation of lower end of ulna due to retarded growth of lower end of radius describes Option A, radio ulnar ankylosis. Option B, made lungs deformity. Option C, sprangles deformity. And option D, swan neck deformity. And the correct option here is option B, made lungs deformity that results due to retarded growth of lower end of the radius and it results in the subluxation of ulna. MCQ number 13, you are seeing a patient in physiotherapy OPD with complaints of left wrist joint stiffness. He has a history of fracture of one of her carpal bones. Which of the following carpal bones is most commonly fractured? Option A, hamate. Option B, scaphoid. Option C, trapezoid. And option D, lunate. And the correct option here is option B, scaphoid. Scaphoid fractures are the most common fractures of carpal bones. MCQ number 14, a patient presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaints of pain and numbness in the lateral three and a half fingers of her right hand. She also has nocturnal wrist pain that sometimes awaken her from sleep. Which of the following options best describes this patient's condition? Option A, radial tunnel syndrome due to radial nerve compression. Option B, carpal tunnel syndrome due to other nerve compression. Option C, Guyon's canal syndrome due to medial nerve compression. And option D, carpal tunnel syndrome due to median nerve compression. And the correct option is option D, carpal tunnel syndrome due to median nerve compression. When the median nerve, as it passes through the carpal tunnel, is compressed, it results in numbness and pain in the lateral three and a half fingers of the hand. M3 number 15, Bennett's fracture is option A, fracture of index finger, option B, fracture of first metacarpal, option C, fracture of scaphoid, and option D, fracture of radius and the correct option here is option b fracture of first metacarpal the fracture of first metacarpal is known as bennett's fracture 
MCQ number 16, all of the following S muscles assist in flexion of the wrist joint except flexor carpi radialis, flexor digitorum superficialis, pronated teres, flexor carpi ulnaris. And the correct option is option C, pronated teres. All of these muscles are flexors of wrist joint except pronated teres. It assists in pronation of wrist. MCQ number 17, you are assessing a 37-year-old male patient with complaints of upper back pain. You ask the patient to elevate his shoulders, shoulder shrugging, and the patient performs a movement successfully. Which muscle and nerve is responsible for this movement? Option A, deltoid muscle supplied by axillary nerve. Option B, trapezius muscle supplied by axillary nerve. Option C, deltoid muscle supplied by accessory nerve. And option D, trapezius muscle supplied by accessory nerve. And the correct option is... Option D, trapezius muscle accessory nerve. This movement, shoulder shrugging movement, is performed by the trapezius muscle. And the nerve that supplies this trapezius muscle is 11th cranial nerve accessory nerve. MCQ number 18, a patient presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaint of shoulder weakness. On assessment, you notice that the patient is unable to abduct the arm against resistance. On further inquiry, the patient reports that he was given an intramuscular Injection near shoulder region by a local person to deal with his fever. Which nerve might have been injured? Option A, radial nerve. Option B, brachial nerve. Option C, axillary nerve. And option D, musculocutaneous nerve. And the correct option here is option C, axillary nerve. As you can see that the patient has problem in shoulder abduction. And the abduction is performed by the deltoid muscle to some extent together with supraspinatus and trapezius and he has a history that he was given intramuscular injection by a local person if the person is not trained he must have damaged the axillary nerve that supplies the deltoid muscle which is the abductor of shoulder joint and in this scenario the correct option is axillary nerve mcq number 19 light bulb sign is seen in which of the following conditions Option A, anterior shoulder dislocation. Option B, anterior hip dislocation. Option C, posterior shoulder dislocation. And option D, posterior hip dislocation. And the correct option here is, option C, posterior shoulder dislocation results in a sign that is known as light bulb sign. MCQ number 20, ape-like hand is seen in patients due to the injury of Option A, radial nerve. Option B, median nerve. Option C, ulnar nerve. And option D, axillary nerve. And the correct option here is option B, median nerve. Injury to the median nerve results in a condition that is known as ape like hand. MCQ number 21, you are seeing a patient in physiotherapy OPD with difficulty in extending the wrist, right wrist joint. The patient has also weak right hand grip. On inquiring, the patient reported that he slept in an armchair last night with his right arm hanging by the side of the chair. What is the most probable diagnosis in this case? Option A, suprascapular nerve palsy. Option B, Saturday night palsy. Option C, ulnar nerve palsy. And option D, none of these. And the correct option here is option B, Saturday night palsy. This uh, condition, Saturday night palsy results when a person sleeps in a position like this and it compresses the ner the radial nerve that is traveling through the radial groove in the shaft of the humerus and when the radial nerve is damaged the patient has wrist drop due to the weakness or paralysis of wrist extensor muscles mcq number 22 which of the following nerves is also known as musician's nerve option a radial nerve option b musculocutaneous nerve option c ulnar nerve and option d axillary nerve and the correct option is option c musician nerve option c ulnar nerve is known as musician nerves as it is responsible for the supplying the muscles that are responsible for fine movements of the hand that is uh, normally seen in the musicians as they play guitar piano that they need fine movements of their fingers and this is responsible with the help of muscles that are supplied by other nerve. That is why it is known as musician's nerve. MCQ number 23. Claw hand is seen in patients with damage to the wish nerve. Option A, radial nerve. Option B, median nerve. Option C, ulnar nerve. And option D, axillary nerve. And the correct option is option C, ulnar nerve. You must remember these three points. That the wrist drop or drop hand is caused by damage to radial nerve. 
claw hand is caused by the damage to other nerve and ape like hand is caused by damage to the median nerve MCQ number 24, a patient presented to physiotherapy OPD with complaints of pain and numbness in lateral three and a half fingers of her right hand. She also has nocturnal wrist pain that sometimes awakens her from sleep. Which of the following special tests is used to diagnose this patient's condition? Option B, A, Jergesen test. Option B, Speeds test. Option C, Phalanx test. Option D, Near test. And the correct option is option C, Phalanx test. The condition patient is suffering from is carpal tunnel syndrome and this is tested by a special test known as phalanx test mcq number 25 you are assessing a patient having weakness of left arm her, sh her left shoulder is adducted and internally rotated with elbow extended and forearm pronated her left wrist is also flexed which one of the following options best describes this patient's conditions option a clumkey's paralysis option b herbs paralysis option c other nerve paralysis and option D both A and B and the correct option is herbs paralysis herbs paralysis results in a posture like this and this is also known as policeman's hand or waiter's tip posture these were the 25 MCQs from the clinical anatomy in the next videos we will be most probably we will be covering the MCQs related to exercise physiology and therapeutics and if there is enough time we may come with mcqs related to clinical anatomy of lower limb in case you have any question you can just comment down below or drop a message at our whatsapp number if you have not subscribed this channel before kindly do subscribe take care allah hafiz